the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. It's with great joy and love that we are assembled today in the house of God as we celebrate the patron of the Universal Church, as we celebrate the great patron of our parish family, St. Joseph. My dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated for the readings. Reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, 
My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. The son of David will live forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, this shall your descendants, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Be to God. the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. How blessed are we to be in the house of the Lord as we celebrate this, the wondrous feast of our patron, St. Joseph. This special day that comes around only once a year in which we thank God 
for the gift of St. Joe. This man whose life was on fire to serve the Lord, who desired to establish his family with the Blessed Mother, who was looking forward to his most joyous and holy and happy wedding day, when all of a sudden God's plans interrupted. Joseph must have been quite excited with the thought of marrying Mary. Joseph must have been quite pleased at the thought of him and Mary having children together, of continuing that royal line of David. Joseph was so excited to settle down in his home of Nazareth. But like we know, if we want to make God laugh, tell him our plans. In that instance in which the angel came, all of a sudden, Joseph's life, as well as the life of the world, would be forever different. Through Mary's great yes of the angel Gabriel's proposition, through Joseph's yes of the angel coming to him in a dream, that most beautiful and wonderful holy family would begin on that beautiful path to Bethlehem. Now, it's easy for us to get frustrated when things don't go our way or unfold in a manner in which we expect. We have two options. We can curse, complain, and whine. And if we're honest, I think we're all very good at that. We've had years of practice. Or we can take the model of St. Joseph. And when something happens that we don't expect, we go to God, we find a new plan. To think of all the instances of St. Joseph in which life <laughs> did not go like he thought. Going to get married, have children with Mary. Uh, well, you are, but it's going to be different. You're going to be a foster father, not a biological father. Okay. We're going to get settled in Nazareth. Oh, oh shoot. We census. Fine, we'll go to Bethlehem. Don't worry, Mary. I'll check us into the nicest inn. So much for that. Well, at least we can rest and relax amongst my family a little bit. Oh, shoot, off to Egypt we go. Well, at least when they took Jesus to Jerusalem at age 12, that all worked out just fine. Oh, wait. <laughs> they lost the Lord. But praise be to God that Joseph always found God, even in the midst of those difficulties. And so, my dear friends, may we have the courage to turn to Joseph when life doesn't go the way that we expect, things don't pan out the way we plan. May we not curse, but may we pray, go forth, and see what amazing things God is going to do with us. St. Joseph, pray for us. Rising before our Lord, confident in God's tremendous love for us, let us pray together what it is that we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thankful for the many gifts and blessings that God has shared with us, let us pray for our sisters and brothers that they too shall be blessed abundantly. For the church, that through the intercession of St. Joseph, we may model Christ's love and light to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord our For our elected officials, that they may embrace the example of St. Joseph in defending the dignity of the human person, most especially the life within the womb. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for expectant fathers everywhere, that they may have the courage to rejoice um, with that gift of life and to embrace that wonderful joy of fatherhood. We pray to the Lord. We pray in a special way for all of those institutions dedicated to St. Joseph. In a special way, we pray for our parish family as well as the sisters of St. Joseph's that they may be blessed on this, their feast day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are sick and suffering. We pray that through the joy and love of Christ, they may receive his healing hand. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all of those who will die today, that through the intercession of St. Joseph, they may be granted a happy death. We pray to the Lord. We pause now to lift to Jesus the many intentions that are listed in our prayer baskets, inscribed in our prayer book, and in a special way, we pray for those we carry in the quiet of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for all of our beloved dead. Most especially, we pray for Connie, for whom this Mass is offered. Lord, welcome them into your kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we, your beloved children, lift these prayers up to you through Christ our Lord. As we celebrate our great feast, let us pray together the memorari of St. Joseph as found in our worship aid. Remember, O most pure spouse of the Virgin Mary, my noble protector, St. Joseph, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I come to you, my spiritual father, and fervently commend myself to you. Despise not my petitions, O guardian of the Redeemer, but in your goodness hear and answer me. Amen. Let us be seated as the altar is prepared.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you, for this just man was given by you, as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you, Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, the parishioners of St. Joseph, all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, hope of health, well-being, paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, 
Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Remember, therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, place of refreshment, life, 
and peace to us also your servants who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist Stephen Matthias Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Commit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar as they rejoice the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them through Christ our Lord. Let us continue to enjoy the great festivities of this day. Um, it is not only the great day of St. Joseph, but it's also a day in which we are able to remember and to celebrate with the church, our universal patron. Of course, uh, though we are in the Lenten season, there is no call for abstinence today. Um, feel free to throw that... Uh, pork chop on the grill tonight, you know, with the Lord's blessing and to celebrate. Not to say you can eat fish, but you don't have to today. Uh, may we rejoice and celebrate that love. To commemorate this, our patronal feast, in addition to donning some of the historical vestments of our parish, we have some small tokens to remind us of St. Joseph's love. A prayer card as well as uh, metals. And I simply ask that you wait for me to come, and I'll hand them out individually with gloved hands as we're still in this time of pandemic. But let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of our parish family. We thank you for the gift of our patron, St. Joseph. We ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit your blessing upon these prayer cards and holy medals, that all who see them, that all who wear them, may be drawn closer to the church through the intercession of St. Joseph. And we ask that these be blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Just give me a moment or two after Mass, and I'll be very happy to hand them out. Before we do go our separate ways, though, um, as this is a solemnity, we have a very unique opportunity to receive a plenary indulgence. Now, whenever there's a plenary indulgence, there's that special task to do on that day, which is to visit a church dedicated to St. Joseph. Congratulations, check one. Number two is to receive Holy Communion. Well done, everyone. And then the third uh, uh, obligation is to pray for the Holy Father, which we will do in just a little bit. And then that's a partial indulgence. To make it a plenary indulgence is also to receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation. But you, whether that was the week before or the week after. So you still have a, if you haven't gone this past week, you still have a full week to go to reconciliation. And a special reminder that uh, th uh, this afternoon from 4 until 5, and then following stations at 6 o'clock over at St. Steve's, that lovely sacrament will be available. But let us kneel in prayer as we pray for our Holy Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And together we'll pray the litany of St. Joseph. Please respond to the following invocations with pray for us. St. Joseph, patron of the universal church, spouse of the mother of God, pillar of families, model of workers, comfort of the afflicted, Hope of the sick, patron of the dying, terror of demons. 
and let us rise for our final blessing. be with you and with you. bow your heads for the blessing may god the glory and joy of the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers bless you with unending blessings amen breathe through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life May you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. So that together with all, you may possess the joys of the homeland, where Holy Church rejoices that our children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace.